In this left knee specimen, most of the muscles have been removed to expose the deeper structures. The popliteus, which is the key to unlock the knee joint, is exposed. We'll start at the anterior aspect of the knee joint. The quadriceps muscle has been cut and reflected down. Here is the patella contained within the tendon of the quadriceps. This is the patellar ligament attaching to the tibial tuberosity. This is also called the ligamentum patellae. Above the patella here is the suprapatellar bursa, which is rather big in here. The lateral meniscus is quite big in this specimen. The medial meniscus has not been dissected. I am now following the anterior cruciate ligament from the tibia to the lateral condyle of the femur. This here is the posterior cruciate ligament as it attaches to the medial condyle of the femur. As I rotate the specimen on the lateral side, you can see the iliotibial tract. This is attached to the lateral condyle and it stabilizes the knee, especially when the flexed knee supports the weight of the body. Going further laterally, extending from the fibula to the femur is the fibular collateral ligament, also called the lateral collateral ligament. Next to that, this here is the biceps. The tendon of the biceps attaches to the head of the fibula and is often split by the fibular collateral ligament. This here is the common fibular nerve. At this point, it is located on the lateral head of the gastronemius. So here is the nerve coming down. It is quite superficial at this location at the neck of the fibula where it can be palpated. You can also see that the nerve is dividing into two. The superficial fibula, which is for the lateral compartment of the leg, and the deep fibula, which goes anteriorly to the anterior compartment and supplies the muscles there. This deep fibula nerve is accompanied by the anterior tibial artery. What muscles do these nerves supply? Can you name them? On the posterior aspect, note the posterior cruciate ligament right here. This is the popliteus muscle extending from the tibia to the femur. It attaches to the femur right here, close to the attachment of the fibular collateral ligament. It unlocks the knee joint at the beginning of flexion. Unlocking is described as lateral rotation of the femur on the tibia when the tibia is fixed, that is the foot is on the ground. This tendon here is the tendon of semimembranosus attaching to the tib medial tibial condyle. These three tendons are attached to the medial surface of the tibia and they're coming from the three bones forming the hip bone. This is the uh, sartorius. In the middle is the gracilis and below is the semitendinosus. 
Even though these three muscles are inserted so close together here on the tibia, their nerve supply is very different. Can you recall the nerves that supply these muscles? I'd give you a hint. Think in terms of functional groups, extensors, adductors, and uh, flexors. Sartorius is supplied by the femoral nerve. The gracilis is supplied by the obturator nerve. And the semitendinosus is supplied by the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. This is the tendon of the adductor magnus inserting onto the adductor tubercle. This wide band is the tibial collateral ligament, also called the medial collateral ligament. Here is the popliteal artery. And note that as it comes down, it divides into its two branches, the anterior tibial, which goes to the anterior compartment, and the other branch, which continues straight down as the posterior tibial artery in the posterior compartment of the leg. This is the fibular artery, and it is a branch of the posterior tibial. Now, examine the specimen on your own. Think about something important about each structure, where it's coming from, where it's going to, and what does it do. This specimen of the right knee displays the superficial structures around the knee. The joint is opened and flexed to show the ligaments as well as the menisci. The quadriceps muscle has been cut. Here is the edge of the vastus lateralis, intermedius, and medialis. This is the rectus femoris, and you can see that the tendon is separate and lies anterior to the vastus intermedius. Note the patella, which is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Here is the suprapatellar bursa. The infrapatellar bursa is not clearly seen. This is the patellar ligament attaching to the tibial tuberosity. Lateral to the patellar ligament, this here is the iliotibial tract attached to the tibial uh, condyle. These are the menisci, and here are the cruciate ligaments, the anterior and the posterior. These ligaments may be torn in injuries and are tested by the drawer sign. As I rotate the specimen laterally, note the tendon of the biceps and kind of little bit hidden by it, the fibular collateral ligament. On this side here, attaching the femur to the tibia is the tibial collateral ligament, also called the medial collateral ligament due to its position. These three tendons act like guy ropes to support the bony pelvis. Can you name them? In the middle is the girl between two sailors. This is the gracilis. Above 
is the sartorius and below is the semi tendinosus. I will next describe the structures on the posterior aspect. Note how the vasti clothe the shaft of the femur. Can you identify these vessels and this muscle? That is the femoral artery and the muscle is adductor magnus. This is the sciatic nerve in the middle. As we zoom in, note the popliteal artery and the cut edge of the popliteal vein. There is a name change at this adductor hiatus from femoral to popliteal. This is the sciatic nerve accompanying the popliteal artery. There is a branch of the obturator nerve which also comes out through this adductor hiatus to supply the knee joint. As I trace the sciatic nerve, you can see it dividing into its two. Here is the common fibular and this one going down is the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. These are the two heads of the gastrocnemius. This is the medial head right there and this is the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. This large muscle is the soleus. Above the soleus extending behind here you can see part of the popliteus but that has not been exposed in this specimen. Which of the muscles seen in this specimen can flex the knee joint? It is the gastrocnemius and the semimembranosus. If you said soleus, then that is not correct because the soleus does not extend above the knee joint and can have no action on the knee joint. This concludes the demonstration. I hope that you understand the mechanism of locking the special features of the knee joint, the movements that take place at this joint, and the muscles which produce the movements.